Prepare to lift. Lift. With all of our modern techniques and knowledge of roof control, miners are still getting injured and killed in the same manner as they were hundreds of years ago. The appalling fact is that almost all of our roof fall fatalities occur in the face area within 25 feet of the working face. The leading cause of roof fall injuries and fatalities is workmen advancing in by the permanent roof support into an unsupported roof area for reasons other than to install temporary supports. When you're going into a face area, examine it. The first step is to make a visual examination of the area and always stay under supported roof while doing so. Visual inspection is important. If the roof looks dangerous, no further testing is necessary. It should be taken down or be properly supported immediately. The next step is to test the roof and ribs. Start from supported roof and examine toward the face, keeping between the temporary supports and the nearest rib. In some areas, two rows of temporary supports are required before anyone advances beyond permanent supports. Use the sound and vibration method. Always use an acceptable testing tool in making these tests. Both roof and rib testing is conducted only far enough to erect the next supports in the face area. If loose, drummy, or doubtful roof is detected, either take it down or support it. When taking down this loose material, use a slate bar long enough so that you'll be clear of falling debris and still be under supported roof. If this work must be done beyond permanent supports, a minimum of two temporary supports should be set, not more than five feet apart between you and the material. Proper methane tests must be made at each working place immediately before electrically operated equipment is brought in. After roof and gas tests have been made in the face area, roof support operations are started. It is important that you follow the approved roof control plan adopted by your mine. Temporary supports, such as safety jacks or posts, must be installed under unsupported roof for your protection before you begin to install the more permanent roof bolt supports. Get support in there first. You must not proceed beyond the last permanent support unless your job is to install temporary supports. First, make a visual examination. Test the roof. Then, before you move out to put up temporary supports in the unsupported roof area, adjust the approximate height of the jacks while you're back under permanently supported roof. This will minimize the amount of exposure time that you would be in an unsupported roof area. When possible, other people, such as the bolter helper, should stay under supported roof while the jack is being set. The same holds true when using wooden posts for temporary supports. Saw them to proper length while under supported roof and handle and carry them carefully. Safety jacks or posts should be set straight and tight against the roof and on solid footing. When installing wooden posts, only one cap or header block and not more than two wooden wedges should be used to tighten each post. The systematic pattern or positioning of the jacks is essential to distribute the temporary support evenly in the face area. 
where temporary supports are required, such supports should be installed on not more than five foot centers. If roof conditions are bad or doubtful, additional temporary supports can be set to provide adequate protection. Only after the working place has been made safe should roof bolting operations be started. Make certain that you follow the approved roof control plan, particularly in regard to roof bolt lengths, spacing of bolts, and proper bolt torque methods. Do not deviate from the plan except to provide additional support. Effective control of the roof is the most important and most difficult safety problem of the coal mining industry. Immediately after the first bolt has been installed, it should be torqued, and every fourth bolt thereafter should be torqued. The torque readings should be within the limits of the approved roof control plan. If the majority of the bolts tested fall outside the recommended torque range, the bolting equipment should be adjusted immediately, and possibly more bolts, longer bolts with adequate anchorage, or additional roof supporting material, such as crossbars, may be needed. Men who work in the mines know that roof falls continue to be the number one killer, and that bad roof has no respect for age, occupation, or experience. Advancing ventilation is important. Hey, Jim. But don't risk your neck by going under unsupported roof. Get the hell out Can't you see that roof's unsupported? Watch out for yourself and your fellow worker. If your occupation involves you in any kind of face work, whether as a minor operator, roof bolter or helper, timber man or jack setter, brattisman, shot firer, foreman, supervisory official, or any other person required to be in a working section, always follow the approved roof control plan for your mine. See that the required temporary supports and any necessary additional supports are set before starting any work in by the permanent supports. And consistently and adequately test the roof and the ribs before starting other work. You may think that your mine or your particular section has good roof, but with each advance, the roof conditions may change. Don't be caught off guard by thinking that your roof is always good. Don't become so engrossed in your job that you may not be aware of developing hazards. The failure or inability to recognize or properly evaluate the condition of the roof and ribs and the failure to take preventive measures is a contributing cause to many roof fall accidents. I've called you people together this morning to inform you of the fact that uh, we have a new roof control plan. It is management's responsibility to train and educate you in mine safety. Training will familiarize you with your company's roof control plan. And once you know it, you must follow it informs you the proper way to put your roof supports. It has illustrations. And uh, you all know that we have to follow this plan to a T. It is your responsibility to perform your duties safely, to put this training into actual practice. 
And as it pertains to mine roof, remember, you can watch it, listen to it, even test it. But you'll be safer if you support it. This is the only way that we can work safe, and this is a must. Advances in mining technology continue. With sliding type ventilation tubing, the miner can remain under supported roof. And a new type methanometer equipped with an extendable probe allows for methane tests to be made remotely. A total of 33 coal miners were killed in a four year period while in the process of installing safety posts or jacks. To help minimize the number of accidents in the face area, a new type roof bolter equipped with an automated temporary roof support system has been constructed. This bolter, or ATRS, supplies its own temporary roof support. While the surrounding roof is tested, gas checks are made, and the roof is marked according to the roof control plan. Utilizing a roof bolting machine with an ATRS structure eliminates the need for advancing into an unsupported face area to install temporary supports. The roof bolts may now be installed while the operator safely remains under the protection of the temporary support structure. New techniques in roof bolting and improved methods and materials have also resulted in better roof control. Important advances are being made in the use of resin bolting in some areas where conventional mechanically anchored roof bolts have failed to provide adequate support. In areas of extremely difficult roof conditions, a combination bolting method utilizing resin grouted rods connected to conventional roof bolts is used. This system is a new approach to better roof control, which combines the beam building concept with that of the suspension concept of roof bolting. The advantages of both the resin grouted bolts and the tensioned mechanical bolts are incorporated into this new system. Using this combination system, the upper strata, that is the anchorage zone, are reinforced by the resin grouted system, while the lower strata are reinforced by the tensioned mechanical roof bolt without the use of an expansion shell. When tensioned, the lower strata create a strong beam and are suspended from the reinforced anchorage zone. The process is easy. The upper half of the bolt hole is resin grouted using rebars. After the mixing and set time is completed, the mechanical roof bolt is tensioned to the desired torque. The job is done. Today, it is possible for the entire roof bolting sequence to be accomplished remotely. As demonstrated by this automatic roof bolting machine, the operator never has to go near unsupported roof. No matter to what extent technology and scientific breakthroughs take us, we'll always have the human element to consider. We've almost always been our own worst enemy, especially in regards to our own safety. It's up to all of us, miners, management, and supervisors, to work out our safety problems together and practice safe thinking and safe working habits all day, every day.